Judge today's case, crazy, sexy, cool. She says he thinks he's God's gift to women, but really all he is is a mama's boy. Sit down with me and let's see exactly what's going on. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toler presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Stephen Corbett and Lukesha Patton. The two of you have been together for seven years. You have no children together, but you do not want to be together anymore. Mr. Corbett, you want Ms. Patton to reimburse you for $1,600 for a 2005 Chevy Impala, and we're gonna talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Corbett, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're here today? First of all, Your Honor, um, Keisha, my fiance, uh, she's a, got a very beautiful personality, but at the same time, she's like Lisa Left Eye Lopez. She's crazy, sexy, cool, but at the same time, she'll literally burn your house down. <laughs> Burn and, your house and, down? Okay, Mr. Corbett, give me some stories. Yeah, it'll let me take, just give it'll an show example. that to me. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, my mom and her, they physically have gotten into physical altercations. They have a very tumultuous relationship. Well, it started off one, you know, we had a scenario, it was her, uh, her our daughter's baby shower. Uh -huh. So Keisha needed a little help as far as buying some of the items for the baby shower. My mother assisted buying some of the food and buying some of the condiments for the shower. They actually were in the kitchen. Stop, stop. They were in the kitchen cooking together. You know, this is like a dream come true. My mom and my fiance, they're cooking, having a good time. Right. Everything's <laughs> wonderful. We're delivering food to the place. My sister allowed us to uh, rent out a facility in her apartment building, which never happens. Mm -hmm. I can't even rent out the facility. But my sister rolled out the red carpet. So here we are. We had a... Uh, all the guests came, it was very beautiful. Her daughter was there, everything was nice. And so uh, they had purchased, a, 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 my mom had helped purchase a cake for the occasion. And after everybody was eating, they were about to leave. And uh, my mom noticed that no one was grabbing the cake. So she's like, hey, uh, you know, come on everybody, here's the cake or what have you. And it was almost like, at that moment, Keisha just transformed <laughs> and was like, <laughs> You know, uh, I'm gonna get to you. Wanted to, you know, like wanted to get to fist fight over my mom passing out the cake that people were walking past, and I'm trying to figure out what, where is this coming from? And so they delivered, they they fixed the cake, they passed it out. So at the end of it, she wanted me to take her girlfriend home, which I'd already brought my mom to the place. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna take my mom home first before anybody. So I let her know that. Next, you know, Keisha comes into the room, picks up a chair, and is gonna throw it at my mother. I'm like, what's going on here? And so my sister basically said, no, you guys could never come back here to have anything. And right, all right. it just, you know, from there. It just you just embarrassed her, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Patton, now tell me about that incident. What's your version of that event? Your Honor, my version of that is Steve Mom was trying to take over. <laughs> take over my daughter baby shower. She didn't ask if it was okay to cut the cake, she, and she did not buy that cake. I got that cake specially made by Kathy. So then, um, she, like the food, she was late bringing the food. I mean, people here, they eat and stuff like that. You getting the games and stuff started. She, she just wanted to take over the whole baby shower. She even had the audacity, Your Honor, to tell me if I don't do pastel colors, she not doing it, she helping me with the baby shower. How can you, I know you don't have no grandkids right now, and, Sometimes you want my kids to be, uh, you, you claim them as your grandkids, but then when me and Steve is into it, you want to you want not, those ain't his kids. So it's like, make up your mind what, you know, you, you're trying to take over my daughter's baby shower. Um, you're trying to make me do pastel colors, you know, because it's, oh, it, it, I don't want no ghetto colors in here. Ghetto? <laughs> I, I'm not ghetto. So, you know, it, we, was, we was just into yeah, it real but, bad. But, but, but did you pick up a chair, a chair and, Honor, and, and I, threaten I, his I, mother Honor, with it? Your Honor, Your Honor, I definitely did. I, his <laughs> mama, I, I was so mad at his mama, Your Honor. And I know that might have been disrespectful to some, but you don't know what buttons Miss Corbett pushes to you. Miss Batten, let me say this. You cannot claim in one sentence, I'm not ghetto, and then throw a chair at somebody's <laughs> mama in the next. You can't do it. You can't pull it off. 
<laughs> Your Honor, but some people push your buttons and then they take you, you, be, you try to be one way and some people just push you. It you was go. a baby shower. <laughs> it was a baby shower. Tell me what else is going on over there, Mr. Corbett. All right, so, okay. So we had to vacate my, uh, my house because this, you know, Keisha and I didn't start off as boyfriend and girlfriend. We actually were plutonic mm -hmm. friends. And mm -hmm. she worked for me. And she's a wonderful worker. Trust me, I can't go into certain places because they want to see Keisha. She can turn it on. Like I said, that beautiful mm -hmm. personality. Gosh. And I can't even go in. They, they, they want to see to... her. Exactly. Yeah. It's like Tina Turner. You know, they want to see Keisha, you know? Mm, yeah. So we, we, I want You to... Ike in the back with exactly. the bass. Yeah, 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 I got you. It. And so then uh, I'm trying to keep this together. And so then she had a friend that kept trying to get in between us saying I was trying to pimp her out and uh, I'm not paying her enough on time and she should go on her own and all kinds of things. My and best so I, what I was trying to do was keep it platonic. So whenever Keisha would ask, she would need a favor here and there, I would help her. She would need this, I would help her. Then she needed a place to stay, so I let her move in with me. So she lived with me for a couple years. It was no hanky-panky. But then I told her, I said, look, don't let the guy know that, uh, you know, that uh, I, I might have liked you or something. Or right. let him know you're my, I'm your cousin. So he won't ask any questions. So she tells him, oh, yeah, he likes me and all this kind of stuff. So then he was trying to get her to quit the company. So then she was living with me. She didn't want to work. And she wasn't trying to pay no right. bills. Right. All because of what this guy was saying. Okay. So that put our, made our, our, our home situation volatile. Now, Ms. Patton, I understand you have a problem uh, with one Angela Perkins, his ex-girlfriend and best friend. Your Honor. Tell me why you have a problem with her, and while you're doing that, you go get her. I'm gonna tell Your Honor why I have a problem with Ms. Angela. I've never met her. This will be my first time meeting this Whoa! Oh, 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 not in here. Not in here. Yeah. Okay. Miss, I'm not ghetto. <laughs> but as you're far talking like you're his woman. <laughs> no. she, this, is the, this is the stuff I go through, and that's exactly why I don't like her. Ms. Perkins, I'm gonna talk to you momentarily. Tell me yeah. what the nature of your relationship with Mr. Corbin is. Corbett is. Um, Mr. Corbett and I, we were engaged um, at one point. Uh, yes, and I took him to court because we didn't end up getting married because of his mom um, in her controlling ways. Um, that's neither so you, here nor she's there. She's co-signing on you with the mom thing. <laughs> hey, well, the mom, she's a Delta. Well, I'm an AKA, on. and we uh, didn't really kind of get in uh, to uh, get along oh, in that you way. You cannot tell me that that made up, that uh, created a problem between the two of you, Delta and AKA. I wasn't really? a Delta. Oh, why I, was just, I just had an associate, and I was like beneath her. She had an associate. Oh, I didn't even know she was educated. My bad. Oh, I didn't oh. know you were new. <laughs> You was educated. Oh, I have all a master's that you, degree. All the stuff that oh, you don't do Mark nothing. Corbett, you in trouble now. You don't do uh, with, yes. you don't, yes. you don't exactly. do nothing with that education. Oh, baby, I got you my own. Oh, hey, 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 hey. None of that. None of that. None of that. Yes, hold on. Miss, I'm not ghetto. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes I got now. I gotta be. Miss, Miss Perkins, tell me something relevant about your relationship with Mr. Corbett here. <sighs> Mr. Corbett, um, he's a businessman. He has an MBA. He's, you know, looks very well put together mm -hmm. from the eye. Here we go. But things look great on paper with us, but as you're far as... You're talking like you're his woman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. she, this, is the, this is the stuff I go through, and that's exactly why I don't like her. Okay, Ms. Patton, are you... Do you consider yourself his woman? Absolutely not. I don't even want him. I mean, excuse me. I you can't tell. She I... drove. She let him drive her car yesterday. Her car yesterday. Hang well, on, Miss Miss Pat. <laughs> Go ahead. Why are you telling me how compatible you two look on paper? I was trying to give you a little background, kind of just to kind of mm -hmm. get familiar well, with. Well, let's Steve get in I... the foreground now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, um, it didn't work out. Make a long story. Uh huh. She 
reaches out to me via um, Facebook Messenger, writing me this nasty letter. I you sure know, did. Uh, she doesn't even know me. Stephen, he likes to tell his girls, ex, current, present, past, whatever, all his business about the past and the present and who, and he, he has a problem with moving on. Unfortunately, it's something psychologically there going on in his brain that he doesn't know how to move on when it comes to future women or, you know. Yeah, so he maintains his relationships with past women oh. and brings his issues with his current women to his past women, now, which keeps you in conflict with the current woman. Absolutely. I agree with that. I don't care nothing about her. I can't tell. Why do you think she still has a thing for Mr. Corbett? Your Honor. If she moved on and got a new boyfriend down here in Atlanta, well, then why is you still texting Steve? I see, I got the messages asking him for money, okay? Oh. I got proof, honey. Let me tell you how good I am. Okay. I might not have no masters or no bachelors. I just only have an associate, oh, but really? I'm very street smart and book smart. Well, nobody even Okay, talks. hang on, hang on, hang on. Ladies, be quiet. Let nobody Mr. Corbett speak. Mr. Corbett, do you see how you might have created a bit of a mess here all by, you know, by maintaining the, the level of contact that you have with an ex. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst thing that he's done to you over the years? Your Honor, you really want to know? Do pick, the, do the, pick do the audience want to know what happened? <laughs> If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. But she maintains contact with her ex. Does she really? Yeah. Do I? Yeah. Does it, does it bother you? What, what oh, is she it, doing? Oh, it bothered me tremendously. Well, tell me what happened. Hmm. Well, we, uh, it was a particular Valentine's Day where I had, uh, you know, reservations for our favorite restaurant. Yeah. And I had some flowers. And I was really, man, I, you know, I was... I hadn't gotten a ring yet, but, you know, pretty yeah. much on the road to mm -hmm. get a ring. And so then she tells me... She's uh, over in X's house, spent the night over there. And uh, I can't just contact her when I want to contact her. Did you ignore him on Valentine's oh. Day and, and sleep over your ex's house? It's like, when you plan stuff with Steve, it's not always that day. He wants to plan it on his time, when he feel like it. This is he Valentine's know... Day. <sighs> hang on, hang on, go ahead. He wants to plan stuff when it's like convenient for him. Valentine's you know, he... Day. I got that part. <laughs> He wants to plan it when it's convenient for him. Not knowing what you have to do or anything like that. So let me tell you what I did. I put my phone on vibrate. I went over to my friend's house. Wasn't Sean. So let's get the story straight. I sat there. Nothing happened. The friend of mine that have helped Steve in the past have taken Steve places. He has his own transportation company. He didn't, like, turn Steve on to, like, doing his own transportation. So now Steve has his own transportation company. But... A friend of mine, still a friend of mine, ain't kicked it with over like 10 years, honest to God. He's just a friend of mine. He know everything I've been through, and he don't want me to date Steve because of all the stuff that Steve has done to me over the years that I've dated him, engaged to him, and stuff like that. He said, Keisha, you deserve better. What's the worst thing that he's done to you over the years? Huh. Your Honor, you really want to know? Do, pick, the, do, the, pick do the audience want to know what happened? <laughs> Okay. I support Steve in everything that he do. To make a long story short, I support him, his book, going to nursing homes, DJing, because I'm, I'm a CNA. I've been a CNA for 24 years. I go back to school in January to become a nurse. Okay. So... <laughs> Let's talk. Hey, hey, look, look, look. I, I, I'm not surprised. But, let, let, she stayed hey, with me hey, first. Hey, hey, hey. That was supposed to, she was supposed to go to school rent-free, <laughs> and that didn't happen. I'm not interested in, you know, although I am, I, I, I am pleased that, hey, stop, 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 stop. Though I am now, pleased that, you know. So she I, can go to school. Hey, hey. All right. You see me up here? Yes, you're right. I put you all out and go about my business. <laughs> though I am pleased as punch that you two, you guys are combating by 
comparing degrees. It makes me happy because you're not comparing things but minds. I love that part. But I want to get to what happened. So I'm going to start with Ms. Perkins. Tell me about the limousine company. What limousine company? <laughs> Steven is a jack of all trades, a master of none. Okay? He always has all these different businesses. That limousine is over there broke down. Probably got a flat tire on it. Probably need a motor. <laughs> okay. So, uh, he always starting something. You're right, I like to object. Okay? <laughs> oh, no. I'm stand up for myself. What you on? I got to stand up for myself. <laughs> I'm going to sit you down in a minute. I'm going to object, Your Honor. I, I got to object you can't, on this. You can't object. Let when me ask you. Hey, 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 hey. I'm ready to put you all, all right, out. All right, all right. Here you go. <laughs> Is there a point to that story? Just the fact that he never takes care of his business and his money is not coming in like he's saying it in. Mm -hmm. he, he is. He takes his workers. He does what he does with her. That's how he got me. He came with me talking about, oh, you're a great worker. You could be an intern with me and DJ. I started liking him. Oh, he starts talking about marriage. We both start talking about marriage. Want to work it out. Didn't work. Okay, move on. Keep it moving. Steven cannot move on. So I got you. I got you. So Steven wants to object and 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 tell me something. So, so I, I, Mr. Corbett, I, go right ahead. I mean, I guess if you don't have an Escalade and you got fifty million dollars in the bank, you don't have a business. That is not true. I guess that's business the piece. Satin. When we started, that was when I was beginning my transportation business. She hasn't seen my my vans that I have. <laughs> I've got two vans and two buses, and I do I, I move seniors around. Mm -hmm. That took time to develop. Right. So cars break down and you fix them. Right. They told you our right. way. You right. were naked, right. Right. running down the street. Hey, that's mine. Oh, listen, 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 listen. Hey, 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 I wasn't hey, naked. Hey. I My daughter's naked. looking out like, oh, I want to understand that was, hey, that was a van of mine. Stop. Ridiculous. Stop. Ms. Burgers, have a seat. Because <laughs> you're just confusing me. Yeah. Mr. Corbett, I'm going to ask you why you think I should award you $1,600 from Ms. Patton. She wanted a down payment on the Malibu. I paid the down payment. It got told. I paid for the cost to get out of the tow company. Then she didn't even keep the payments up. He gave me $1,000 as a gift, as a down payment for an Impala mm -hmm. at a used car lot place in Detroit. So I drove the car not long at all because he kept throwing in my face of what he bought me. So I had to keep correcting him. You did not buy me no car. You put a down payment on the car. You did not buy me. I don't, I would be car note free. I got you to so, get me. Yeah, so, so I'm like, he's sitting there telling people, telling his mom, his mom like, oh, I cannot believe you done something stupid like that, Steven. I taught you better than that. My, I don't oh, 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 don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It's, wait, it's over, it's over, it's over. You have no paperwork over there. And her story sounds very, very true. Sounds just like something you do. Sounds just like something she do. Uh, <laughs> Y'all got to worry. Y'all got to stop worrying about status. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody, status, I'm this, I'm not ghetto, I'm this. I got this, I got that, all that's got to get. The best money is quiet money. The best money is the money ain't nobody know you got. So they won't ask you for none of it. The best thing is to buy your own stuff so you don't have to worry about who said what about who, who did what for whom and whatever. Handle your own business. Do it quietly, do it coolly. You don't have to throw it out there for everybody to see. Just stack it up slow, st steady, silent. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordinary. Are you officially calling it off? He got some major work to do, and I mean major work to do, because I don't trust him. 